if you see someone some point along the way who said they worked on this building I hope you'll take the time to say thank you because they helped us to change the course of history of disease from the very beginning Chancellor's edict was you will move forward and you will get this building in place so we can begin to save lives and we actually took that that message and we put it in our construction trailer so everyone could see it on a weekly basis and everybody understood the sense of urgency. We had four years, exactly four years, from the day that we started this project to program, plan, design, and build the building. The UMass Building Authority led the Sherman Center project from concept to completion. We used an accelerated construction process to complete this, the largest publicly funded construction project in Massachusetts history, on time and under budget. We were the, the first consultants hired for the project. The UMass Building Authority had a quasi-public process. We were still designing while we were releasing design packages. We believe that that type of management strategy saved this project well over a year of time, and time is money. And once we were hired, we then started to form the team with the architect, the construction manager, the commissioning agents, the testing companies, and so on. Building one of these types of projects requires an enormous amount of collaboration. It was never just about any one of us, it was always about this team. I think you build trust through hard work. I think it's also part of the culture of the entities that were involved, whether it was the building authority, the medical school, the contractor, ARC, or, or PMA. We all had that same vision. There are a lot of decisions made in a given day, a given week. Thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of decisions made on this job that required teamwork, collaboration, and open, transparent environment. One of the joys is finding ways to make it beautiful. And for us, uh, looking at the types of wood, like the Anna Gray wood and the stainless steel, uh, um, all of that worked together in harmony to, to really make it a kind of a warm environment, a place where you, you want to be. One of the things I love about this building is walking up the main stair and up into the central atrium and from that atrium space you've got a great skylight you can look up and you can see the main research tower above you you can look around on each side and see the um, students of the learning communities you can see the um, spaces on the other side for the simulation suites you look down there's people dining and students studying down in there and suddenly it all comes together one of the things that this project gave us an opportunity to do is integrating dry research space with wet research space. I mean, we're seeing that as a trend in general uh, within laboratory design. As more and more data gets generated, you have to have a way to understand what that data means. Bringing those two sets of scientists with their different approaches to the same problem is really how you develop that synergy and, and, and create the, the real collaboration that has to take place. It was a long process. We were spending a lot of time in meetings, figuring out what these labs were going to be like, developing uh, um, standards and, uh, and layouts, testing those. Things may have changed. Equipment adapts. Uh, uses change. Experiments and protocols change. We gave the university a great footprint and layout that can uh, adjust and be adapted and still meet the researchers' needs. The other piece that's interesting is the simulation uh, laboratories. Taking the idea of how you learn medicine and treating it as a place where you actually experience what it's like to be in a clinic or be in an operating room and learn in a way that was really not possible in the older facilities. We're always looking to see what we can do differently and better than anyone else in the industry. The way we use BIM or building information modeling on this project was taking it to the next step. Most contractors use BIM to coordinate. We actually use BIM uh, to manage the process and, and build the building virtually before we actually had a building in place. BIM allowed us to have um, meetings where we could look in virtual time of challenges that we would have found in the field. Would have produced cost impacts potentially, schedule impacts. We wanted to take BIM to the next le next level, which was really a, a request from um, the vice chancellor here at the medical school. And we wanted to provide him with a 6D model, which was a, a facilities model that could be used for renovations, um, and also an active electronic database for all of his 
team's files moving forward so that it can assist them with ongoing maintenance of all of their, their complicated equipment. With the model we had at the end of the day, there was real value added to the client. All the information was located in one file, so gone are the days where you have to, you'd have shelves of binders and O&M manuals that nobody could ever find. We're very proud that this facility actually achieved LEED Gold. It did better than was mandated. We're using uh, active uh, daylight sensors and daylight harvesting on the project, which means that for a good portion of the day, the lights may not even be on. I think people perform better in daylight, people feel more connected and happier. Uh, the long-term savings in energy demands and cost for the campus, I think are really going to start to be recognized very quickly. The favorite part of the project for me was probably uh, areas you don't see in the building. It's the mechanical rooms, it's the uh, what we call the interstitial space. It's like a forest of ductwork. You can't see through the other side. All those spaces, that's where all the work, what you don't see is where all the work is. In 25 years of my career, I can also say it's probably one of the best managed projects I've been involved with. I think it's going to put the university even more firmly on the map in terms of, uh, um, in terms of medical research. Uh, the quality is exceptional and if we could win, award, win an award for teamwork I think that would be the ultimate award because that's what this project to me was all about. The research within it will eradicate diseases and the economic impact of this one building will facilitate 1,600 jobs within it and $264 million of economic activity throughout the Commonwealth.